Well, hello, you are eating with Emilio, and today we're looking at the top 10 eats across Kyoto, Japan. Remember to subscribe, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. Number one is Okonomiyaki. We are eating here tonight, Teppanyaki Manru. Once you head inside, you just realize how nice and quaint and small this place is. Very intimate uh, and uh, would definitely require a booking if you are looking at getting there. We did not require a booking, which is nice. We went on a non-busy night, so we were able to just line up and get a spot. But they focus, as you can see, on the okonomiyaki. The okonomiyaki is their featured dish, uh, along with a number of different side dishes, which we also tried. Listening. Uh, chicken covered in cheese. Looks spectacular. Look at that sauce on top. It's just glistening. Glistening. So good. So much going on in there. A lot of flavor. We actually got the Okonomiyaki open on, open on, like, with the cheese on it, the pork one. You get those sauces, you get the sweet, you get the salty, you get the, the bits of uh, meat in there, the egginess, and the cheese. Really tasty Okonomiyaki. Definitely would recommend you getting this. I've got to say that is the tastiest Okonomiyaki that I've had. Um, very, very good. A lot of flavor and not too much of one condiment over another. They're very controlled and balanced. So definitely a place that you should visit if you are in the Kyoto area or in the Eon area in Kyoto. Number two is sushi. Of course, in Japan, you have to try sushi, and this place, Musashi Sushi, in the center of Kyoto, was fantastic. Good size sushi train with fantastic variety, fantastic quality sushi, and at a reasonable price. 146 yen for those blue and uh, rainbow colored plates, and 346 for the special plate sushi, which is your more high grade. So here we got the train just passing through. Here we are friendly sushi chefs making the sushi. Here we got some raw shrimp. Mm. Oh, that is so soft. It's um very very tasty. A little bit sweet as well. Yeah. With a whale egg. Look at that. Oh. That yolk. Mm. That yolk of the quail egg covering the really, really soft tuna. That was great. Fatty tuna. Mm. Wow. That tuna is so soft. Sort of like it's melted. Yeah. We sampled the whole range of sushi and sashimi and it was fantastic. It was so good that we actually came back two times while we were in Kyoto and a place that we would return if we ever were in the area again. Cannot go wrong with that um, scallop. So that scallop is completely melted, just broke apart. Number three is matcha tea a favorite in Japan. We went to a place called Ipodo Tea and it was fantastic. This is a small little matcha tea house specializing in a lot of different sorts of teas as well as matcha varieties. You can also sample matcha tea with the matcha expert making it for you right in front of you 
and it's just great being able to watch him with the precision and how to actually make the matcha to come out super creamy, super tasty and a whole bunch of flavor. Tasting the matcha was the best part of the entire experience. We loved it so much that we bought a few pouches of different matcha teas to enjoy at home. Mm. Nishiki Market comes in at number four. In the heart of Kyoto is an amazing market to try a variety of different food delights. Pickled veggies really pickled everything. Fresh variety of other cooked goods, samples, snacks, this is the place for every food lover. Good place. They sell a lot of pickles. You can sample a whole lot of different pickles. Fresh treats to try. Look at this. Smell of the ocean. We sampled a whole bunch of stuff, including delicious fried delights that were super tasty and absolutely delicious. Number five is ramen, a Japan speciality, a noodle. We went to Gion Kyoto for our ramen delights, as well as a number of other food items. Good sized place inside with a good variety of food choices. So here is the ramen, a delicious pork, nice and fatty, very thin noodles. Let's see how it tastes, it does look pretty good. It smells pretty good as well. That's good. This breaks apart, it's full of the part. It's just so, so soft, really good. Strong porky flavor. Some of the noodles. That broth is very, very porky. Definitely a tasty ramen. Um, that's probably the, uh, the highlight of the ramen, would be the meat itself. But look, overall, good ramen. Number six is crepes. Not an item that you would expect to find in Japan in Kyoto, but this place was fantastic. Freshly done on the stove, nice and hot, with a range of different toppings, including some Japanese favorites if you want to change it up a little bit. We got ice cream, cream, sprinkles, chocolate topping, it was just a dessert sugar chocolate fest that really satisfied our sweet tooth for that afternoon. It's still warm. Give it a sample. Tell us what you think. Mm. Nice Creams. chocolate. Nice chocolate? Mm. Nice. Number seven is Sekemen. A delicious find was Nanda Thai Ramen, which was a hidden gem that we discovered in our adventures in Kyoto. Much like a ramen, you're dipping the noodles inside of your soup, your broth, and this place specialized in a delicious curry. Nice. Get yourself your noodles, your pork, and you're dipping it in. Oh, oh, yeah. The 
Look at that. That looks great. Wow. It's a bubbling soup for dipping. Now, we should noodles. We're going to dip them in our nice bowl. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a nice strong curry. We'll try some of the meat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So soft that pork. Number eight is bubble tea or boba tea. Bubble tea from Pearl Lady Chaba. We love matcha so much that we went and got ourselves a matcha bubble tea with tapioca pearl. So sweet, so delicious. Pretty good. Good? Mm -hmm. This is actually not bad. Sugar. Pearl Lady Chaba. Number nine, Nijo Castle. A great castle to visit when you're in Kyoto, but then within the center of the castle is a beautiful little tea house for enjoying matcha tea and enjoying desserts and other Japanese snacks. Ninjojo Castle. Now we're about to dine on some tea, maybe a little snacky dessert thing. Tea, followed by sweets. All right, now we're gonna drink. Drink it quickly. Two hands, the rules. Oh, that's so creamy. Incredible. That is just so creamy. So good. So good. The colour is just incredible. Look at that colour. It's very, a lot of strawberry. Um, strawberry. Oh, very strawberry. There's a lot of syrup on that. It's so sweet. Oh, that is so strawberry. So syrupy. That's good. At number 10, enjoy your Japanese snacks that are everywhere. <laughs> 150 yen. Yeah. Yeah, spreading that red bean inside. Okay, it's got a pretty little fox. Try it out. Right. It's like a bread consistency, a bit sweet, obviously. We enjoyed both custard as well as red bean cakes. Alright, so we've got ourselves a melon bread, which I've heard is quite tasty. We bought this from 7-Eleven. Let's see what it tastes like. Let's just do this off. Mm. Mm. So on the top you got like sugar. There we go, melon bread. 110 yen. For this one from 7-Eleven. Alright, so we're gonna get ourselves a yakitori chicken thigh. With sauce, and I think I'm gonna get one of these chickens. Karagi going fried chicken hot. The red one. Oh, maybe the cheese one. Oh, that looks good. Let's see the cheese one. The cheese one. Fried chicken sauce. Oh, it's a little bit, a little bit like KFC. There's a little bit of spice on there. Good yakitori. The chicken, succulent, soft. Then you got the beautiful sauce on the outside. A little bit charcoaly on some bits. The great, great yakitori for a very cheap place, cheap stall at your local Lawson's in Japan. I well, hope you enjoyed my video. I would love it if you subscribe, clicking on the notification bell, and like this video, Eating with Emilio, to be kept up to date with great food.